this video, we're going to talk about MTT assays. These assays are typically used to measure viability or proliferation of cells, and they're commonly used in most molecular biology labs. In this video specifically, we're going to focus on the theory behind the assay, so the reaction that forms the basis of the assay, the limitations, and the applications of this assay. So let's get started by talking about the definition of the assay. I want you to always think about the MTT assay as an assay that actually measures metabolism. This is really important because while metabolism often correlates very well with viability and proliferation, as we see here, we said that metabolism can equal both viability and proliferation. It's important to remember that proliferation and viability aren't always 100% correlated with metabolism, and that this assay is really measuring metabolism, and we're using that as a proxy for viability and proliferation. So let's dive a little further into why I said that this reaction really measures metabolism and not viability. This over here is the MTT molecule, and on the other side is the formazan molecule. When added to cells, the mitochondrial reductase within the cells is what reduces MTT to formazan. And so it takes MTT from this yellow color to formazan, which is a purple color, which will be more purple with more viability. So that really light purple that we see is the least viable. And then the really dark purple that you see is the most viable when added to the cells. And so here you can see that this reaction is all about the rate of metabolism within the cells. So when cells are more viable or more proliferative, there will of course most likely be more metabolism, but not necessarily always. And so that is why it's important to remember that this is a reaction that really measures metabolism. So now that we've talked about what the reaction is, let's talk a little bit more about the applications of this assay. So one of the main applications is looking at viability or proliferation, as we've already discussed. But what does that practically mean in terms of experiments? So some of the experiments you can do with this would include things like a dose response assay. So you may want to know that if I arrange the concentration of a drug, how do my cells respond or what's an appropriate dose? You can also look at drug screening. So for example, comparing the effect of one drug to another. You can look at effects of gene modulation. So for example, does my knockdown or overexpression of this gene change how proliferative my cells are? And then finally, you can look at synergies between drugs. Does adding these two drugs make my cells die faster? And then in some cases, much more rarely, you can also look at the metabolic effects of certain molecules or compounds. Do also want to touch briefly on the limitations of this assay. While it's a wonderful assay, it does have some pretty significant limitations. And so one of these is that it can be affected by any sort of chemical interference that affects metabolism. So you do need to be careful about what kinds of drugs or compounds you're screening. For example, some plant derivatives, vitamin A, certain toxins, all inhibit metabolism. And so those will affect what your MTT assay is able to read out for you. The second thing to think about is toxicity. And so the MTT reagent has actually been shown to be a little bit toxic to some cells. The third is what we've already talked about. This is an assay that's really measuring metabolism. And so that's something you always want to keep in mind. And the fourth thing is that this assay is not able to be multiplexed. And so once you add your MTT reagent, the cells are going to die and form these formazan crystals since you can't do anything else with the cells. For the first two things, the chemical interference and the toxicity, it's just important to have good controls. And we'll talk about that when we discuss plate design. For the third thing, it's really just something to be aware of and make sure you're not using compounds that might affect metabolism. And the fourth, again, something to be aware of. If you do need to multiplex, you may want to consider a different way of doing things. And so given that we talked about these limitations, which some people feel are quite significant, I also want to touch on the alternatives. So the first is XTTs or other assays that are really quite similar to MTTs. The second is an assay called Cell Titer Glow, which is based on ATP. And this is probably the most common alternative. And the third is 
possibly something like a live dead cell die, which would function very differently. And so like I said, XTTs are really the same logic as an MTT. Cell titer glow is probably the most common thing that is used and the thing that has really gained favor, but is more expensive. And then live dead dyes, would you'd really require flow cytometry or immunofluorescence to be able to read those out. So it's sort of a very different readout, but certainly a viable alternative. And that brings us to the end of this MTT theory lecture. So please follow along if you'd like to see more of this content. There will be additional videos on the protocol behind the assay and then also on how to analyze it. And then if you visit the website, the link of which is on here and also down below in the comment section, you can see more expanded content and you will be able to download these slides and also a written up protocol for the assay. Thanks so much for listening.